welcome to this week's Bulletin of Technical Information from the IBA. The monthly dip into our post bag reveals more queries on NICAM stereo, as well as picture over scanning and widescreen television. On the radio front, the first batch of the so-called incremental franchises prepare to come on air. And we have full details of two new television relays at Bobby Tracy in Devon and at Evervale in Gwent. But first, a look at our technical post bag and NICAM Stereo continues to dominate in letters from the general public. Dealers, please take note, as there seems to be a lot of confusion around. David Houston of Knaresborough bought a stereo television set two years ago, costing over £500, and asked his dealer to make the necessary adjustments for NICAM. I was most concerned when he told me that my stereo TV was no good. He said it was to do with the format you have chosen, and I would have to buy another TV, costing over £800. Why can I not get stereo on my stereo TV? I am concerned that I paid for stereo, but I cannot get it. What you paid for, Mr. Houston, was a television set with two loudspeaker systems and a means of connecting an external stereo source. This should be, and usually is, made clear in the shop by a variety of expressions such as stereo sound from a stereo source. And most so-called stereo models have a synthetic or pseudo stereo facility to give some sort of width to the basic mono sound. As always, it's important to make sure what it is you're buying, if there is any doubt. All receivers with NICAM digital stereo decoders should have the word NICAM featured somewhere. For those like Mr. Hewson, there is an answer, as we know of at least two firms who are producing special kits to convert television sets with two loudspeaker systems to full NICAM operation. The conversion would normally have to be done by a competent service technician. Tony Smith of Chesterfield has had more success. I set my NICAM video recorder to timeshift the engineering announcements every Tuesday, and I'm well pleased with the use of stereo to separate the two presenters. The video I have works well with NICAM, except it'll always display stereo, irrespective of whether the signal is digital mono or stereo. Why are music programs being broadcast in mono? And finally, is NICAM compatible with DBS? And if so, are such satellites as Astra going to take it on? The stereo indicator issue is a tricky one. As far as the NICAM transmission system is concerned, there is no technical difference between a stereo source and a mono one. Mono occurs simply when the left and right stereo channels are identical. That's why there is no special mode for mono, except the mono plus data condition, and we have no plans to put out data at the moment. Also, for operational reasons, in common with FM radio, we prefer to leave the system in the stereo-capable mode, whether or not the program is actually in stereo. So, although we sympathise with those who feel the need for a mono indication, we think the answer lies in the program listings and publicity. There aren't many stereo programmes yet, but when the whole network begins to go stereo next year, there certainly will be more. The other point Mr Smith made was whether or not NICAM is compatible with DBS. Well, there are many aspects of terrestrial NICAM that are the same as the digital audio coding in the D and D2 Mac satellite format. But in Mac, the audio data is transmitted in high-speed bursts rather than continuously. This is all taken care of in receivers with Mac decoders, such as those for BSB, due early next year. Satellite channels using PAL are currently restricted to analog sound, although there can be several channels. A NICAM subcarrier could in theory be added, but this might disrupt the situation for existing satellite receivers. Unlike DBS, there are no enforced standards. Very briefly, another NICAM query, this one from Mr. R. E. Gray of Nottingham. Would the NICAM digital signal be present on the composite video output of a standard TV set SCART connector? The answer to that one is no. Neither the NICAM subcarrier nor the FM mono sound fall within the video signal bandwidth, and they are filtered out to avoid patterning on the picture. Douglas Milne next from Isleworth in Middlesex. I attended your display of widescreen television at Olympia, which I find most interesting and informative. However, I forgot to ask about the compatibility of your new extra line system with the video machines we're using at present. We actually showed two different line standards at that exhibition, 625 line sequential scanning and 1250 line interlaced scanning. The 625 line processing would be done in the receiver and so a standard video recorder would suffice, preferably a component type like S VHS. For the full 1250 lines HDTV, 
a special recorder would be needed which could handle the full bandwidth DMAX signal direct. Finally, on a more down-to-earth point, Mr. B. King of Dagenham, Essex. Whilst recently looking around various retailers for new televisions, I noticed that almost all televisions of the same screen size had varying proportions of picture displayed. Any information on the correct setting of the test card will be appreciated. Well, the test card is rarely seen on the air these days, and it's not possible to be really precise about the horizontal picture positioning or overscanning. There are bound to be variations in horizontal positioning between channels and between transmitters, as the PAL timing specifications are not all that tight.